Jesus elucidates, death and destruction are coming. Be not afraid of the fire that falls from heaven. May 12, 2020 Words from Jesus through Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Jesus began, Tell the heart dwellers not to be afraid of the fire that falls from heaven, but the fire that burns in hell for eternity. I'm standing by waiting to rescue souls from hell, if they will call out to me. People of the earth, you have been duped and deceived by your rulers, but those who are evil are in high places. You've been led astray to believe that what they are doing is good, when it is pure evil. You young ones, who have been trained in the ways of the world, you have much to learn to uncover the truth of the agenda behind the teachings that have prepared you to hate what is good and right. I am the one who created this beautiful planet, and I am the one who has preserved it. Those who falsely accuse me are the ones who are setting this planet up for its demise. Satan's entire agenda is to destroy you in the most painful way possible, and to destroy this planet as well. He hates you, and everything this beautiful earth contains, and his one and only agenda is suffering, death, and destruction. I am telling you this because you do not know the extent of deception and destruction plotted against you. This nation is now at an impasse. It has reached a point of no return. You're entering into a time of unparalleled suffering and destruction and I'm calling you all to pray as never before because your very lives do indeed depend upon it. What is coming is not to be believed, but for those who have done their homework and are prepared, I will be with you to assist others. Lord, please tell us what to expect. Jesus replied, Death and destruction. Prayer, prayer and more prayers. Work at this time is not the focus. Prayer is. Press into prayer. Lives depend upon your faithful prayers and vigilance. Many lives, thousands of lives, not just their bodies, but where it is determined they shall go after they die. As I told you in the beginning, do not be concerned about the fires on the earth, but those within the earth, in hell, and be concerned with your salvation. The reign of God comes in a way no one would expect. With thunder and lightning and signs in the sky do I come, yet not all are ready for my coming. And this has been the issue with my father and I. We want so many more to be saved, Claire, so many more. And while my bride waits anxiously for my coming, assuming even that she's ready, I still must look upon selfish lives that live for themselves and not for my kingdom come and my will to be done on earth. All the while this carnival is going on, souls are dying for lack of food, clothing, shelter, love, a knowledge of how dear they are to me. Claire, there are still many, many more to be saved before we remove my bride from the earth. You are wise to come to me seeking this wisdom, because while everyone is getting busy for the rapture, I'm busy looking for laborers in the field, and I find pitifully few. What does this mean, beloved? It means I must wait. My bride is still preoccupied with herself, not with those who are suffering want, and above all, suffering in ignorance of my tender love for them. 
The gospel must be preached throughout the whole world, and even though it seems obvious that I could come for my bride at any moment, I'm still waiting for her to perform. That is in obedience, work in the fields that are ripening for the harvest. That is why the rapture will not come about now. This has been settled in heaven. It is not time yet. But I must drop hints and stir into flame the eventuality of my soon coming in hopes that my precious bride will take stock of her life and discover she is indeed lacking in resemblance to me. Yes, this is a finer point, my bride must resemble me. She must be persecuted, rejected and downgraded in the eyes of the world. This can only happen when she is busy about my business, bringing in the harvest. Lord, I've been such a failure at fasting lately. It seems like I truly love myself more than the work you've given me, but I get so weak. I want you to understand once and for all, it is not given to every soul to fast severely. Get your eyes off fasting and onto loving and serving. You see the enemy succeeds in sidetracking and discouraging you by drawing attention to your weaknesses. This holds true for you and every heart dweller. This is Satan's favorite way to disconnect the Christian from me. Acquisition, guilt and shame. Some have made an idol out of fasting. There is no doubt that it is powerful and important in your lives, but do not make it into an idol. That unless you chose a strict, arbitrary fast, you are not fit to hear from me. That is a lie. If I've chosen you to hear from me, you will hear, but I do honor self-denial, but don't make it a god. Excesses of food and entertainment dull the senses and create a certain deafness. So to be sharp, alert and attentive to my call, I ask you to moderate the things in your lives. Claire, it would shock you if you could see what's in the mind of many who fast. So many do it from an impure motive. They want to be holy like Saint so-and-so, so they figure they can fast like so-and-so did and they will be holy. No, it doesn't work that way. It is love, obedience and humility that prepare the heart, not just outward observances. Now, if I ask a soul to abstain, then it is for a very good reason and their obedience will please me. The spiritual life is loaded with reefs of presumption that appear holy but are traps. That is why I teach the greatest of these is love, someone who looks fit and very accomplished, fasting, praying, shedding tears for others, giving words of knowledge, yet is not operating from brotherly love. This person is missing what is most important. Enough said, but I wanted to clarify to you, it has been settled in heaven, there is still more time, yet many catastrophes will occur on earth to bring my bride up and into the forefront of the harvest. These are wake-up calls, not the final trump. Please do not doubt me in this. So I say to you, steady as she goes, get to work on your apostolate, to contribute to the harvest, be a worker in my fields and bring in the souls that are languishing and ignorant of my tremendous love for them. Do not allow yourself to be cowed by the enemy who is forever accusing you and holding you up to the standards I didn't choose. No, follow me alone, out of obedience, and do not make idols for yourselves, out of spiritual practices. Listen for my instructions on your fasting and follow them, because I alone know what you can handle and what is not good for you. Do this and I will be well pleased with you. 
Also be on the lookout for tricks to sidetrack you into doing other things because they are holier in your eyes. No, this is vainglory. Humility and obedience will defeat these traps you have so easily fallen into in the past. I bless you now, my sweet spouses, and in your hearing ears I send garlands of grace and peace, born of my righteousness, to rest upon your shoulders and increase your confidence in our very special relationship.